In this parametry, we have either slow maneuver and forceful maneuver. First, you will do the slow maneuver for a patient. So let's see what we can see in this spirogram, in the, in the graph that develop during the spirometry. First, of course, when a person has the normal breathing, normal inspiration, normal expiration. If we can make it draw somewhat larger curves, uh, inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expiration, inspiration is upward, expiration is downward. This is uh, how it will be uh, recorded in the uh, device. So you have this normal breathing or tidal breathing. Of course, after expiration, you will come to this point and the inspiration will start here. What is this uh, line or what is this point? This is the resting state of the lung. Resting state of the lung. So the volume uh, within the resting state of the lung or we, when we do normal expiration, the volume of air in the lung is called functional residual capacity. This is the air remaining in the lung or the air in the lung during the resting state. Okay. Then you will ask the patient after full inspiration to do full expiration. So you will ask the person to do first full inspiration. This is tidal inspiration or normal inspiration. How much inspiration that he can do after that? This is called the inspiratory reserve volume because it's an extra brief, extra inspiration. So it is called reserve. When you have an extra, means you have the reserve, the inspiratory reserve volume. And this is, of course, all called inspiratory capacity because it's equal to inspiratory uh, normal inspiration and inspiratory reserve volume, all inspiratory capacity. So we will then ask the patient to do full expiration. In the full expiration, you will get which volume or which capacity you will get vital capacity, which is the one that's important to measure, especially in this parametry. So after full inspiration, you ask the person to do full expiration. So you will expire all the air that he inspired and even he can expire more until reaching where? Until reaching to a point of residual volume. So, so he will he should expire till he can. So we will ask the patient to do slow expiration after deep inspiration until he could not expire more. And this is called what? Tidal capacity. So it is equal to the tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and expiratory reserve volume. You can see this is expiratory reserve volume one because normal expiration till this level. After this expiration, how much air the person can expire for the expiratory reserve volume? Um, okay, and this one is residual volume. This is during slow maneuver. So this one is slow maneuver. What about the forceful maneuver? We have also forceful maneuver, which is very important component of the spirometry. So in the forceful maneuver, which is very important to know. So it is called volume time graph. So here we have a volume. Here we, by meter, of course, here we have time, by second. So this is where second, second, third, fourth, five, and fourth, and so on. Okay. This is time, this is four. We have one meter, two meters, three, four, five, and Okay, so what do you think to happen during forceful expiration? You will ask the person to take a deep breathing and later do a forceful expiration. In the forceful expiration at the beginning, the volume is low or high. It is the highest volume, of course. Then we expire. So what will happen? There will be rapid rise. 
after that so for the uh, when the person expired during the forceful expiration when the patient is normal it will be like that so the shape of the carriage will be like that so which one is the vital capacity here we have the term of vital capacity but here the vital capacity is called slow vital capacity so whenever you hear about vital capacity that means you talk about the slow vital capacity because in the forceful maneuver that one we have Forced vital capacity, FVC. Why is this called forced vital capacity? Because it is the same as vital capacity, but it is forceful. So after maximum inspiration, the maximum amount of air that expires, forceful. So there will be rapid rise, increase in the volume, the volume of expiratory air at the beginning, and later this volume will stay in the same level or slightly higher. Okay, so and then how we can know uh, the flow affected or not? You know why we do spirometry? Spirometry have several indications, but the most important indication is to differentiate between the, um, uh, for example, to diagnose the obstructive lung disease, to exclude the restricted lung disease. In order to diagnose obstructive and exclude restrictive, we have this volume time curve and this, this one also to know the vital capacity and other measures. Um, so how we can find the flow? So as we said, we can exclude restrictive and diagnose obstructive. How we can diagnose obstructive lung disease? For restrictive, it is easy, we can say. We will measure the volume. If the volume decreases, we think of restrictive lung disease. Of course, in the vital capacity normal, we can exclude the restrictive lung disease, but we cannot diagnose the restrictive by spirometry. Do you know why? Why we cannot diagnose restrictive lung disease by spirometry? Because for the restrictive lung disease, there is a restriction lung expansion. They have the decrease in the volumes. In order to know if the volumes decrease, the decrease in the vital capacity alone it's not an indicative of the um, true indicator of the uh, restrictive lung disease. We should have total lung capacity. And a total lung capacity, how many volume can uh, uh, residual volume, total volume that remain in after full maximum inspiration of its volume inside the lung. Or biology, total lung capacity. So we have to measure the total lung capacity, but Total lung capacity cannot be measured by spirometry because spirometry only measures the air that uh, go to inside the device or flow to the device, but we cannot flow or flow our residual volume into the device. That's why residual volume cannot be measured. Uh, so uh, we need total lung capacity and residual volume. We need a device that measures this. So um, what about the obstruction? For, right, for, uh, for restriction, we say that we need a volume and spirometer measure the volume and flow. But for obstruction, we should measure the flow. How the device measure the flow or how we can uh, find the flow from the volume. We have time and we have volume. We should know how much rapid the air empty from our lungs. How we could know that? By this forceful expiration. When the forceful expiration, what will happen? Most of the air that expire will expire in the first second. Normal. In normal person, most of the air expired will be expired in the first second. So as you can see, within the first second, most of the air expired. Why do most of the air? Most of the air or percentage in total, so total air that expires how much? If we can measure this, it's about 5.2 liter, for example. So this 5.2 liter is the total volume of air that expires after full inspiration. But forcefully, that's what this is. FVC, the first vital purpose. What about this one? This one is the volume of air that expires in the first second. This is called air. FEV1. What is FEV1? Forced 
it's directly follow in the first second, not one second. Because in the one second, it's a different. In the first second, they come to the journey of the doctor. At the first second, the person can expire food. Or the, most of the air, about 80% of the air can be expired in the first second or should be expired in the first second. So how we could find the flow or we know that the flow is affected? If the flow is affected or the flow is decreased, the percentage of air that expired in the first second decreases. How you could find the percentage of air in the first second? We have this volume in the first second and the volume, total volume of the lung we should find the percentage by this by dividing this one in the first second by the volume at the end. So by and multiply by hundred, we'll find the percentage. So we have a term which is called ratio. F E V one over F V C ratio. This is the measure of flow and the most important part of the experiment. F E V one over F V C ratio. This ratio is very important. If it is decreased, it means the person has obstructive lung disease. The decrease will show like this. It will be like this. So the person cannot expire that amount of air in the first second in comparison to the total air that the person can expire. So in the obstructive lung disease, the person could empty all the air in the lung, but it needs time, of course, uh, because there is resistance to air flow, there is obstruction, so the volume of air that expired in the first second, that normally should be about 80% of the total volume of air that expired, will decrease. So it becomes how much? Become less than 70%. So whenever you have a ratio of less than 70%, means you have obstructive lung disease. Or decrease flow. Okay, so why we don't depend on the FEV1 alone? Because FEV1 alone will not give you the uh, this picture or this view you make make you to uh, do some mistake in the interpreting the spirometry. Spirometry, for example. In a person with a restrictive lung disease, what do you think the curve would be? Yeah, how it would uh, look like? The curve would be like this. They have no, uh, no problem in the flow, so they have problem in the volume. So the volume will be lower, but all the volume will be lower. Even the FEV1 is lower. So if you have the low FEV, you cannot say this is due to decrease in the flow. You have to make sure. How do you make sure? You have to look at the FEV1 over FVC ratio. This one is a, an indicator of the flow. So, if you can see in the OS, in the restrictive lung disease, we have the same shape of the curve, but slightly lower. But it is a quarter According to the severity, of course, it could be so lower. Or the FEV1 could be near normal, but the FVC is low. So in that case, we can see the FEV1 decrease, but at the same time, the FVC is also decreased. So when we calculate the ratio of FEV1 over FVC, what will happen to it? Either normal or even increase, because the decrease in the FVC is so much than the decrease in the FEV1. So this is restricted lung disease. But we have to be... Um, you have to be aware of something during spirometry. You have to be aware of the proper technique uh, and uh, you should proper coaching the patient to um, during, for example, both of them slow and forced uh, expiration to do uh, or in, to deflate the lung completely and to inflate the lung completely. If he didn't do so, what will happen there will be a false result. So, for example, the person expired till here. You have to allow him or ask him to expire till he can. Because if the expiration to here, we say that all oh, FVC decrease. And even during slow inspiration, if the person can, um, didn't inspire fully, um, but he can do so, 
and um, we have to repeat the procedure to the patient until we, we get a uh, good um, graphs and curves and that is appropriate and reproducible. So this is the basis of spirometry.